exactly. I can already see three and I know there was a fourth. Five, six, seven, eight. So we've got quite a few of them actually. There's a lot more than I first anticipated. Now I'm not sure which pack this is, but you can see they're quite spread out. And it looks like a bit of blood on the faces. So I think maybe they were successful this morning and managed to catch something. And so now they're just taking a little bit of a break. They were running around and I was saying they were causing absolute havoc at one point. And they may be just taking a little bit of a rest now and before they then get up and start to continue running around again. But super cool to see them. It's one of the dark dogs. I think this might be some of the Sands pack. I'm not 100% sure. It could be the remainder of... The, actually, there's a collared individual over there. Now, I'm not sure if that's the collared male from... from the Angala pack or if it's the collared individual from the Sands pack. It's going to be interesting to see. I'll have to just wait and, and hopefully one or two of them will pop their head... I mean, pop up and stand up and then it makes it a lot easier to be actually ID which pack of dogs we've got. At the end of the day, it's now this time of the year is when the dogs are starting to move, but this could actually be the other section of the Investec breakaway. So we had the five dogs the other day and then there was eight remaining dogs and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six... I've got seven, eight. So this is the eight remaining ones, I think. So this is, I think the remainder of the Investec pack and hopefully I will be right if they all kind of stand up. There's one particular female that I'm looking for as well but I don't know if she was in the five split or in the in the eight split. Um, she's a very light colored individual but I don't see her here so maybe she's with the other five and, and like I said there's this older dog from the Angala pack which is the one that's collared but I can't see if that's that individual that we've got lying here with the collar but one of them does have a collar and all of the the dogs within the Kruger Park system, every pack at the moment does have a collared dog in it. And, and the reason why, it's not because we use this to find the dogs. We have no idea. We have no access to that information. It, it gets pinged to somebody else and, and it only goes off every sort of 12 hours. But the reason why it's being done is because they're doing a big sort of campaign now to try and rid... The area of distemper and and rabies and particularly the wild dogs and the dogs are being vaccinated against it now to be able to keep up with the vaccinations and to keep finding them and, and, and treating them with the dropout darts is that they need to have one member of the pack collared so that they can find the pack here in the cyber sands it's not so difficult for them because we report on pretty much every day where they are the dogs generally get found anywhere that they go because of the kind of rarity of them and then people put a lot of time in trying to find them so they generally get found quite quickly but in parts of Kruger you, you're working with areas that are three times the size of the Sabi Sands before there's even a road and so with the dogs there they need to be collared and otherwise to find them is almost impossible and, and so the collar needs to be put on and, and that's why. Hopefully after two years of this whole process those collars will then be taken off and we will no longer see sort of all of the packs with collars on them but they're all very sleepy right now which is great for us because it's allowed us an opportunity just to kind of catch up with them and, and to spend some time with them without them moving off at the end of the day like I was saying Chitwa they were kind of flirting with the southern boundary and, and Chitwa's north-south boundaries are quite short in comparison to the east-west boundaries and so now that they're lying down it means we can get a really nice long view of them and hopefully after a while they do start to wake up and move again but it definitely seems like there's a little bit of blood on the faces and so maybe they're going to end up actually just sleeping for most of the day in this particular section it could very well be the case and Jeremiah you say you love the satellite dishes on their heads well yes their ears are quite incredible aren't they and the reason why they have to have such big ears is because unfortunately for these guys they're not built like some of the other animals out here and are very tall and are able to see over grass and so it's vitally important for these guys to be able to get to a situation where they can actually hear what's going on rather than see what's going on and so big ears help for them to be able to listen to their prey animals when they are trying to keep up and trying to sort of chase them through the long grass now i'm just going to reposition myself quickly because they are lying in the road and the vehicle that was across the road has now left and it allows me now a chance to get a slightly better view of those dogs that are lying in the road and that we don't have to kind of have too much grass in the way there we go that's a little bit better avium at least kind of can see them but they look as though they've now decided this is where they're going to sleep for the day and and you find with the bigger packs for some reason they all tend to be oh hang on something's just woken them up maybe hyena is going to run in here and cause a bit of trauma and a bit of drama to start. I absolutely love when we see 
wild dogs and, and hyenas because it just is absolute chaos when that happens. You'll find hyenas chasing dogs, dogs chasing hyenas. It's actually very difficult to work out who's doing what. But I wonder if we're going to see a situation where maybe a hyena arrives at some point and finds them. As you can see this dog on the right is the most alert of all of them. He's the one that keeps popping. I think it's a he. It looks like a he. It's difficult to sex them when they lying down. Becca, you're asking if there are any other dogs in the park besides wild dogs. So, no. The only dog is, is well, true dog, I would say. I suppose true dog is also not the right word, but the only kind of real dog that we see is these guys. They obviously are jackals and that occur here, so both the side-striped and the black-backed, which are, are part of the canine family. Um, but that's it. There's no other dog-like animal that has dog in its name. These guys actually, there's this whole big raging debate at the moment as to whether or not they're going to, their name's going to be changed to Painted Wolf. Um, and so they are referred to as both the Painted Wolf and the African Wild Dog. So it just depends on, on who, where you are and where you grow up that you call them different things. But at the end of the day, no, these are the only kind of wild dogs that we actually see within the park itself. They are the most incredible animals though. When they're resting like this, they look as though they're not really capable of much, but they are absolutely ruthless. Wild dogs are a creature that is able to seriously um, hunt and, and is able to bring down a large percentage of animals. They can be seriously destructive in, in certain areas and it's why wild dogs are a tough animal to reintroduce to areas not many people actually want wild dogs anywhere near their areas because of the heavy impact that they have on a lot of the animal species that are in the area so you'll find them often going after things like bushbuck impalas and they really hammer a population of antelope and if you get a, a pack of denning dogs in your area they reckon that the, the de decrease in certain antelope species is absolutely massive so they are ruthless when they get going and, and, and they have to spend time resting like this because when they are active it's non-stop and they trot and they run and there's very seldom even a walk and they'll chase multitude of different animals and it really is a lot of energy expended and so they sometimes do need to rest and if they've had a tough morning like it sounds like they have where they've run around all over the place then we have a situation where they'll start to relax and just take it easier but and I believe a lot of you are commenting on how nice it is just to have a calm relaxed wild dog sighting it is nice isn't it the thing about wild dogs and the best part about it is that you never know at any point when it's going to just go absolutely cha chaotic because they can be sitting like this resting sleeping and all of a sudden one of them spots an impala and next thing the whole pack is up and running and, and chasing them all over the place and so it's it's an animal that is always worth spending time with Arya, you're asking what is the wild dog's hierarchy like? Well, Arya, there's, in a group, there's generally a male and female alpha pair that is on top. And then you'll often get a secondary female called the beta female. And, and that's then how it runs from there. The, the dogs below that generally are not, there's no real pecking order between the rest of them. They'll all kind of help out and, and, and aid the cause. But there's definitely a alpha male female hierarchy within the the, uh, the pack itself now that sort of alpha male and alpha female within the pack is actually sometimes quite fluid you'll find a situation where obviously males try and dominate for as long as they can and mate for as long as they can but sometimes other males will come in and there'll be a process of change and so most of these packs you'll find that the, if a male is dominant for two to three years that's a seriously good run for him and sometimes it's even shorter than just one season and then the next time it's a different male Excuse me, and the reason why that is is because a lot of our dogs don't live very long out here. An old wild dog in the Kruger system is five years old, and there are some that will go as much as seven, but generally the average age from what the research has shown is that a lot of these dogs pretty much live to about three and a half, four years, and that's it. And and it's because of the high density of the hyena, lion, leopard, um, crocodiles that, that go after dogs a lot because dogs when they feed they make a lot of noise and there's a lot of things going on they often get caught out by a lot of other predators and unfortunately then hurt by them so their numbers and their, their sort of ages are very young and that's why you get a high turnover of alpha males and females right well we're going to sit with our dogs because why not at the end of the day it's not every day we get to see them they relax they 
taking it very easy. And one person who will be very, very jealous about this is that of Brent Leo Smith, who is continuing and forging forward with his birding for the morning.